Hello, and welcome to Avio's Journey. My name is Anthony Pika. This show is all about helping the new and upcoming voiceover artists grow their business, sidestep all the crazy things that I seem to step on. It is Tuesday, November 1st. 2022. I hope you had a great Halloween. I'm excited about today's topic. We're going to be talking about three voice acting lessons for beginners. I love this topic. I love coaching voiceover and and voice actors on acting because I think in the end, your performance has to rise above everybody else. We talk about so many things on this channel, excuse me, and you know, so much of it revolves around marketing but you know and and a lot of it is around performance but i don't often speak enough about how valuable it is to be an excellent performer and in our case for voiceover we have a lot of tips and tricks and things that you can use uh, to be a better voiceover artist so let's go ahead and dive into these things we've got three different lessons i want to cover today and hopefully these lessons today are going to get you somewhere where you can start using them right away. Okay? So let's drink some coffee. <laughs> oh, and by the way, real quick, make sure you hit the like and subscribe button if you haven't done so already. And hit the notification bell so that you get notified when I post a new video or go live uh, for Coffee Talk, for example. And also, make sure you check out the link below for Vio's Journey Elite Academy. We're offering 50% off the first month uh, that you join. And, you know... The community, the learning, everything there is just incredible. This is what we do every day, all day, teaching people how to be better voice actors and get more work. Um, so we're very excited. A lot of our members make a lot of money in voiceovers, so we're very thrilled about that. Um, so please stop by, check it out. We'd love to have you. Okay, let's go ahead and dive into these three voice acting lessons for beginners. Number one. One thing that I love to use myself and I love to teach new voice actors to do is when you have a copy, you've got script in front of you, and you're trying to figure out how do I read this, how do I bring this to life? The positive thing about all of this is, is that we record our work and we can also get rid of recordings. Okay, We don't have to do the first take only. So one thing I like to do is it's called a lead-in. So basically what I do is let's say I have a piece of copy and the copy is um, mornings aren't for everyone. Coffee's on, a brisk sunrise and a cool a cool morning, black top and green as far as the eye can see. Uh, this, is, this is a spot on one of my demos. So let's say I, my first line is mornings aren't for everyone. And let's say in my mind I really want to connect with this piece. You know, I want to, to make it um, reach people. I want it to be inspiring, conversational, uh, and, you know, um, meaningful. So you're like, wow, that's a lot to hit on one line, right? Well, here's what a lead-in does. Basically, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say this line a couple of times, okay? I'm going to say it a couple of times, and what I'm doing is as I'm saying this line over and over again, I'm searching for, as I'm saying it, I'm trying different things with my voice, with my cadence, speed, things like that, to get a feel for, you know, what I'm trying to accomplish, what feels right for me. So I might say, mornings aren't for everyone. 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 Now that last one I really liked. Mornings aren't for everyone. Or mornings aren't for everyone. Hmm. Coffee's on, a brisk sunrise and a cool morning. Black top and green as far as the eye can see. It's where I belong. It's home. Ford, where you belong. That's a piece that I, I did for my demo, but a lead-in allows me to do the line a couple of times or improv some lines that aren't the script so that I get a feel, all right? I get the right, um, I think, the right motion, the right beginning, to start the whole piece. A lot of times when we start a piece, uh, we start acting, we get stuck with the feel of the script by that first couple of words we say. If we say them a certain way, the rest of the script follows suit. Uh, so it's so vital, especially in our line of work, because we don't get to practice these things over and over again. We don't have time. I mean, you know, we get a script, we read it once or twice, but we got to go. We got to get it done and move on to the next thing. So it's vital to have something like this. So your first acting lesson is use the lead-in. 
use this idea to do that first line a couple of times. Find what you like. This is based off of you, with the directions that you're giving, but find what feels right to you, what you enjoy, okay? what makes you be like, oh, that's the right one, and then do the rest of the piece. That will help you um, leaps and bounds, leaps and bounds, okay? So that's the first one, lead in. The second one I want to talk to you is about speed, cadence. I, we we had a voice a VO's journey elite uh, voiceover conference recently, and uh, it was fantastic. And one of our speakers was Sean Pratt. Um, I'm sure you know who Sean Pratt is, but it's just um, a, a legend in the field of uh, audio books as well as education for nonfiction audio. Really amazing, amazing teacher as well. Really love I love Sean. And he was saying something about AI and uh, in the conference, and he said what makes a difference between an AI and a person is the ability to speed up and slow down, right? To show consciousness about what you're actually reading through that cadence that you have. So your your second acting lesson that I want to give you is vary the speed of your reads. Now, this is a 20 foot level, you know, 20,000 foot level look at what we're doing, you know, and, and for, for example, in a VO's Journey Elite Academy and, and our acting courses, and I also teach advanced acting, you know, we dive really into this idea. But for, for this video, I want you to look at like a 20,000 foot view of your work. And, you know, this second lesson is about speeding up and slowing down, not keeping the same pace throughout the whole piece. So here's an example. Um, anecdotal information. So a lot of times we're doing a voiceover and you might have something like, you know, um, you know being a dad is a chore. There's so many things that you've got to do. I wake up every morning. I go make breakfast for the family. I take the kids to school, um, you know, and I go home and I get back in bed. But once that's over, then I can. Okay. So um, it's not the best script there, but what I did was, is I, I go home and I get back in bed. There's usually this anecdotal information. There's parts in scripts where we speed up because it's like an aside. It's an extra piece of information that's not meant to be given the same speed importance as the rest of the piece, but yet it brings the conversation it brings our voice alive and makes it sound realistic because that's how we speak in real life, just like what I did just then. All right. Did you, and then I did it just again. I was slowing down to share with you an idea and thought, and then I quickly finished it so that you got the point that it was driving it home. Speeding up and slowing down throughout a piece gives you that real person feeling. So if you're struggling with this, this, uh, I sound too much like an artificial, you know, bot or something or AI. Okay. It's primarily because the cadence, the speed in which you narrate usually stays the same. It never speeds up or slows down. Listen to a bot. You, you'll, you'll notice that it's always the same because there, there's no, and if they do so, there's no rhyme or reason because they don't have that consciousness. So, for us, yet let's use that to our advantage. When you're narrating, speed up and slow down. Okay. Now you want to make sure as you're going through a script, you're not just doing it randomly per se, but there are parts where, you know, there's information that you need to punch out like I'm doing right now. And then there's other information that you don't, just like I just did, where I sped up. You see how I slowed down to make a point, then I sped up to make a point. You can do the same in your narration. Okay. So that's the second thing, use cadences, all right? The third thing I want to go over is expressiveness. Now, expressiveness is can be shown through a multitude of different ways, through pitch, through speed, through pauses, through um, tone, okay, um, through... Uh, I said pausing before and after there uh, there is a variety of ways that I just mentioned that you can show expressiveness. But your third lesson is how you show expressiveness throughout your piece 
can really bring the piece alive, okay? The script alive. So for example, if I'm trying to make something stand out, okay? There's all of these ways that you can do it, but one of them, let's just say one of them is pausing before or after a piece or, or a word, okay? So let's say I say the most important thing to learn is don't go too fast. <laughs> all right. So like you can see, and that's, that's very important too. You don't want to narrate too fast, but remember use that cadence, speeding up and slowing down. But did you see how the pauses, the pause before the word, all right, don't. Okay. And then the pauses um, sub, uh, subsequently after each one of those left an expressive, a very expressive uh, message. Okay, it, it really drawed out the importance of it. So you can pause before or after a word to really draw out importance of that word. Pitch. So we know, like I just said, pitch, right? We know going up and down in your voice can also have an incredible expressive uh, attribute to it. I think one of the biggest things with pitch is the question or the statement, a lot of us, um, you know, we, we've all heard the thing where younger people typically speak, you know, uh, they end up at the end of sentences, the end of sentences, right? There's always like this question in their voice. What is it that you're talking about? Why are we always doing it? What's the point? Are you listening to me? <laughs> Let's move forward. Like there's always this upward ending to their words. There's always some sort of question, all right? Or... Do we end down? All right? Do we finish a statement? At the at the end of a sentence, does it feel like it's over? Like the idea is done. See, I'm like lending down. Learning to use pitch in that way is vital to expressing a message. And you have to understand too, right? Like all the things we're doing here, they're not about just saying the words. They're about how we're saying the words. So I always call this subtext or the story underneath the story. Okay, what story are you telling underneath the words? And that's what all this is. These acting lessons are. So listen, I, I could go into this and and we die, you know. And if you want more of this and actual practice and working on these things, you know, check out the academy. Really, I mean, it, it is um, something that we are doing and we're expanding upon because there's such a need of it. I think in our community as voice actors, especially with so many new people coming in, we need to work on our acting. So you know, we're really expanding that part of our academies. Now we have um, you know two uh, uh, weekly uh, classes on. Uh, voice acting for beginners, and then we have an advanced voice acting class. So we're really, you know, and and uh, three, so three acting classes a week, live every every week, um, and all those are recorded, by the way, too, in case you missed them. So you can always go back and watch them. But this is so important, and I hope these three, at least these three acting lessons. All right, you've got the lead in, which is a great thing that you can start doing right now. All right, we've got speed, which matters so much. Learning to speed up, slow down. Make points with your cadence matters, and it makes you a real person and not a robot, all right? And three, using expressiveness, using these different modes of expression to really share ideas, important thoughts, make us know whether this is uh, something confident, a question, whether should we should keep listening, whether we should finish listening, all of these things, what's important and what's not important, all right? What context is 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 vital to the overall thought has to be relayed in a manner in which we share with different expressions okay listen i hope that this has been really helpful i'm i i love this topic it is uh it is a way for us to really bring words to life and to share and express how we feel about them as well it's it's really a wonderful thing 
I hope to see you at Avio's Journey Elite Academy. But either way, please make sure, again, you hit that like and subscribe button. Thank you for listening. Uh, I hope this has helped, and I will talk to you soon. All right? You guys have a wonderful Tuesday. Happy beginning of November. Thanksgiving. Ah! Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.